2002. So if we zoom out, and now I'm going to zoom in here, you can see what looks like something that was almost carved in as a trail. Or uh, maybe that at one point broke off and they just smoothened it out. That's kind of what I think could have happened. But if you keep following it, and then you go up a ways, you're going to see that trail that's actually etched into the stone. You can clearly see that, and that's a single track. If you're on like a bike, that would be considered a single track, a real single, tra single native track. Native single track. That's a native single track. Mesa and, Verde style. And then there's like multiple stories right below it where people live comfortably, it looks like. And I want you to bring up how if this was higher with rain, or with not with rain, but with a, with a river, right? If this was all river flow, yeah. then they could basically canoe right to their location. right? To yeah, the if this was highly watered, there'd be a big pool here, and their homes would only be 30 foot from the edge. Wow. You know, they just go down a little to the water's edge there. You really spotted that. I'm so glad you spotted that. So we're in this slot here where you can see clearly cut marks. The size of that thing. I mean, it's almost as tall as diamond. What are you, diamond? Five, nine? This is hand done and you can just see all the marks here. Almost like a, a, a defensive point. Ah, yeah. Very much so. And they, they, they groove this trail all the way in here. And back, St. Cowie style. Yep, wagon wheels. Totally. <laughs> a it's deep. Just like St. Cowie. And how, how many hours away is St. Cowie from here? Three, four hours from here? Now this might also be functioning for water water collection too. This is a pretty hard sandstone. This isn't like St. Cowie, St. Cowie's rhyolite. Dude, this is for water. Why would they need that for a trail? That's for water. Yeah, because you, you could just walk. Down the hill like this. You could just walk next to it. Pretty rad. And that's it. No, that's a great find. Unless it's buried. No, keep going, man. It's still going. Your collection wagon wheel. Right there, do you see it? No, this is park work, I think. Park work? Yeah. Looks like something was down there. This is the third one of these washes. Talk about how you think this was all underwater not too long ago. 
Well, I think that the the land itself. So see the bottom down there. Yeah. Was probably all the way up to the first cliff band oh, about thirteen thousand years ago during the time of Clovis, and that yeah. the and that's where the cliff house band is. Yeah. Or just above it, and and the water is so the this is all eroded since the Younger Dryas event, probably mostly from twelve thousand nine hundred to about eighty five hundred years ago when the weather was much different. I'm about to do a podcast on, I've done some paleoclimatological studies yeah. using uh, archaeology and uh, pollen. And what I found is that it was extremely wet and fertile here all the way up through about a thousand. And then there were uh, two extreme droughts, one that lasted a hundred years and around 1100 and another 200 year drought and about that ended in 1350. And that's what drove these people out of here. They were living in super prosperous times, extremely fertile, and then the rain stopped for 250 years. And it's a wrap at that point. So what you... Ah, uh, thunderstorms. Look at these mushrooms. Giant, giant shrooms. That's cool. Mesa Verde mushroom, right there. One looks like a mushroom hut. Amanita muscaria. It's a perfect form. The Christmas mushroom. Watch yourself. And these giant erosional canyons just begin suddenly. They just pinch off to a point. Just like they end in the sides here, abruptly. Is it electric discharge that forms these canyons? And then water just happens to flow at the low point? Beautiful. site. Now this is kind of the final phase of building here in Mesa Verde. Once they left these places, they left the wood. Like you saw that right there. Part of the site today, right. they put the Instead of going down, they remained on the top, which was quite a few places that did that. Uh, this has 60 of the 80 original rooms that are still on the plastic walls in this particular place. Uh, even though they did the textiles, they would have things on the floors, plastic floor and the walls from being so dirty. Uh, so 
they, they did try to make their house as just as nice as they possibly That is the fire temple. Couple people living here. This is the oak tree house. Look at that wall. Look at the kiva. Almost looks Mayan. Yeah, it's two stories too. You can see it's got something up right above it. But just like the keystone work on the right side of the kiva? Yeah, it does. They did a great job with that one. This looks potentially a little older chalk one, probably 1150, 1200 less. The big one we just looked at was an older one, 1250, 1300. That is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oak House. And the giant Kiva in here. And then there's a second floor up there. Yeah, that's what I was saying, right above it. That's where the pit bosses were. They were overlooking all the other employees, making sure they were doing what they were supposed to be doing. Here is the fire temple area. Pretty extensive. Multiple kivas down on this level. hanging area with Moki steps. You see them? 
real nice smoky steps up into the hanging upper, upper floor. I mean, this is way up. See those mokies? Yeah. <laughs> like, on the cliff. Yeah. Coming up from the lower level. Like they're levitating. How do they get to that? Interesting. This structure. Huge walls in the back there. Two squares in a circle. Got some chain link fence down there. They were trying to pre preserve or protect it. There's still paint and the original clay on the back wall there of this shelf. Which has got lots of square holes in it. Which was supporting a wooden floor or a ceiling in another floor like that. And they need to excavate a lot more out of there. They just don't do a lot of work here. It's like, I don't want to know. What was going on? But there was a lot going on. <laughs> so we are what they call the Sun Temple. It looks older. Oh, Chuck Cohen. And it's really foot thick, these three foot walls and these really small rooms. So Rex is about to read the actual narrative. Take a look at the chink work here. It's pretty lackadaisical. And I would put this around 1300 for the Sun Temple. There's these huge rooms. Household artifacts and massive architecture is unlike any other structure in the park. Of the few similar D shaped buildings found in the region, is the only one not built within a Pueblo. Could it have had social, ritual, or even symbolic functions? Some studies suggest it had a role in celestial observations, and you can see it from a bird's eye view right there. Oh, yeah. <coughs> now, if you look at the time frame here, the largest and most striking D-shaped structures in the ancestral Pueblo world, such as the Pueblo Benito, are found at Chaco Canyon in northern New Mexico. Chaco Canyon appears to have played an influential role in the region. And you can see how that happened right there. Definitely. That's Pueblo Benito, and this is where we are at the Sun Temple. So were they preserving it with this too? Like this was all just to preserve it on the top? Yeah. Yeah, that's to keep the walls from getting weathered. Okay. But that's a kiva, so that's for uh, prayer cer ceremony. And take a look at this cliff dwelling.
Just massive structure after structure. Mesa. Mesa Verde.